Okay, super close. Go back to your Citrix delivery controller virtual machine. So here I'm in my remote desktop connection manager. I've got the uh, machine configured up here, lab CTX01 in my lab. And we're gonna uh, go back to Citrix Studio and we're gonna hit the next step of the site setup. So let's go and do it now. This is gonna set up what they call machine catalogs. This is gonna build out our virtual desktops. This is pretty cool. We we'll spend a lot of time once the lab's up and running playing around with these settings. So I'm just going to give you the basics, but come back here and have a bit of a play around. So let's get started. I want to do a Windows Desktop OS. Notice how the, the options change on the left hand side. The top one, Windows Server OS, that's your hosted shared desktop where you might have a single Windows virtual machine with multiple users. Windows Desktop OS where you have a Windows guest VM with a single user and remote PC access that allows people, this is pretty cool, to basically tunnel through the Citrix environment to their physical desktop. So you've got a, a person working from home, they can get to their physical PC in the office. For now, Windows Desktop OS. Now these are power managed. So virtual machines or blade machines, physical servers are a different option. So we wanna select machines that are power managed and we're gonna use Citrix Machine Creation Services. Okay, that's where we're basically offloading the VM creation, in this case to VMware, and actually mostly to the Nutanix. The Nutanix underneath is gonna create uh, clones of all our VMs. So we're gonna choose MCS. Uh, this is, you can muck around with this. For the moment, I'm just going to say here that I want users to connect to a new random desktop each time they log in. You can play around with these different settings later. And I'm going to choose my master image, my golden image. So this is the machine we've been playing with in my lab. It's called LabWin701. That's the one we're going to play. Next. How many do I want? I'm going to say 10. Uh, I want two virtual CPUs, four gig of RAM, that's plenty. It just mirrors it off what the machine was originally created with. I actually think this is pretty cool because if the machine was originally created with a lot more CPU and memory, you can drop it back or, or, or modify it here. I like this, nice and simple. Hit next. Where do you want to add the machines in AD? So we're going to create new Active Directory accounts for them. And I don't really care where they go. And we're going to give them a name. Now, give them a name, and then you've got to give them a number. So the, the hash here is where the unique number for the virtual machines comes in. So I've just got lab-win7-3 hashes, which equates to lab-win, and then the numbers would be 012. So that's pretty much important. <laughs> Each machine needs a unique name. Hit next. Machine catalog. This is when you start giving names to things for your users. So we'll just call this Windows 7 VDI. And this is for admins, Windows 7 Golden VDI. Hit finish. Now, if you flick over to your vCenter, you're gonna start seeing some different things pop up here in a second, which is pretty cool. So what it started is it's doing a snapshot. Now, snapshot's super fast. And I'll just flick back. And it's gonna start copying these images around and doing a few other little bits and pieces. So you can basically just watch it go and uh, between this screen in your Citrix Studio and vCenter, you'll see some stuff happen. So once this is sort of worked, you're going to have a whole bunch of virtual machines ready to go. Well, when I say ready to go, they're created. Next, we need to start assigning them to users, and then Citrix is going to start configuring them. So let's go back to our delivery controller, back to Citrix Studio. Step three, set up the delivery groups. Delivery group is literally a group of users you want to deliver applications or desktops to. So hit next. Uh, I'm just going to create uh, or use some of the machines that have already been created in that previous catalog. So I'm going to use up all 10. I'm going to allocate all 10 of those. I'm just going to do desktops for now. I'm going to uh, 
allocate them to my domain admins. So anyone that's a member of the domain admin group is going to be presented an option to use these desktops. Now, remember how the Citrix receiver was installed in my guest VM? What you can do here is you can have it automatically configure the Citrix receiver inside my guest VDI machines to point back to Storefront. Storefront is the website or the service that your users will connect to to receive applications and desktops. So that's kind of nifty. We're going to leave this manual for now, but this is, this is a cool feature. So hit next, give it a name. Give it a display name. Actually, this can actually be the same thing. And that's going to go off and set up the policy. So what you'll probably notice in the not too distant future is some of these VMs are going to start powering up. But for the moment, let's have a look inside the storefront. So remembering storefront is the interface between your users and the delivery controller. It, it literally is the shop front. It's where your users are going to go to. They're going to be then given a choice of applications or desktops or whatever else you're, you're publishing out to them. If you see nothing here, just right mouse click and hit refresh. I find sometimes in my lab it can take a little while to refresh. You might also get not responding messages. That's normal. Just be patient. It, it'll come good. So first things first, go down to where it says receiver for, for web and grab this top line, the website URL. The Citrix receiver is the software that you use to start receiving desktops or applications. So grab that top URL and open up a web browser. So here's my Google Chrome in my lab and paste that in. If everything's working well, this is what you're gonna see. This is what your users are presented. I'm gonna log in. Now remember before how we presented uh, all the domain admins uh, access to the Citrix environment. Oh my goodness, I can't type. Administrator. So anyone's a member of that group is going to get access. Here we go. And here's my desktop and my desktop's firing up. Now it's going to take a little while because when you fire this first desktop up, you're going to start seeing things happen. For instance, you're going to start see some VMs actually power on for the first time. So that's what's happened here in vCenter and there's my desktop coming on, which is pretty cool, works quite well. Again, we've done no tuning on these desktops. I'm sure there's some really great tuning guides that you can find online that will show you how to properly build a Windows desktop for Citrix. This is certainly not following any best practice, but Pat yourself on the back, you've just built a VDI environment, you're now publishing Windows 7 to a Citrix receiver. This little pull down gives you a couple of options around full screen and disconnecting, there's some basic preferences here. It's good to actually give you some flash optimizations and things for links that are a bit slow. Again, it's a little slow to log in the first time because it is an initial login, so it has to build out your Windows profile. And remember we said give a random desktop every time. so. It's just going to be a little slow, but uh, that's pretty much it. This is going to be your Windows 7 desktop. If I flick back to the Citrix controller, go back up here, we can start having a look at some sort of stats. So I can come in here and have a look around. Here's a whole bunch of desktops. You can turn them on, off, add them into maintenance mode. You can check usage here of who's using what. I can go back to machine catalogs and uh, get some different stats, add machines. So if I want to add more, maybe that initial 10 is not enough, I can add them in here. So have a bit of a play around. There's, there's a ton of policies. Citrix have got a, a vast amount of stuff in here, like templates that will configure Windows. It's like group policy on steroids. So you can have a bit of a play around in here. For this basic lab, I haven't done any of that. Come back here. Here's my desktop. This is the Citrix receiver, so you can have a bit of a play around with this. Because we're not using encryption, this is just a HTTP session, some of the functionality of the receiver can be a bit fiddly. They kind of enforce HTTPS, which is good, but in a lab we haven't used that. 
we'll just kill that for the moment. But here's my desktop. I'm running uh, that version of Chrome we installed before. This machine's not on the internet, so that won't work. Here's my open office, so we'll load that up. And again, some of these apps, the first time, they have to set themselves up, so they're a little slow. So here's my setup. But uh, you sort of get the idea. It's all working pretty fast. Kill that out. I can uh, resize the desktop, and Citrix is just going to figure it out, so it automatically resizes. Load Internet Explorer. Come down here, we can load Calculator. So there's a whole bunch of other little bits and pieces we can do. And when we're finished, we can either log off or we can just go and disconnect. Go back to that. See how the little light screen? That means they're ready to roll. If I click on that, it's going to load up a desktop again. And I'm back where I was before because I didn't log off. So that, that desktop uh, is still there waiting for me. The users, again, because we haven't set any security and I'm an admin, can be destructive. So I can actually shut things down. When I click on the button, it's just going to give me another desktop. And the system's going to automatically manage that. So what you'll start seeing here is I'm consuming, oh, I'm consuming more desktops and it's spinning some on, turning some off, and it's managing my desktop fleet. That's the machine creation service at work. So there you have it. This is a super basic getting started lab to uh, run up Citrix on uh, VMware. I'll do another one for Hyper-V in the future. So if you're interested, have a look on the blog. Maybe I've done it by now. <laughs> and uh, that'll give you a little bit of uh, something else to play around with. So that's VDI. That's done. The next step is configuring a hosted shared desktop. So I'm going to do that. And the last step is we're going to publish out an application. So in here, in this receiver, I'm publishing a full desktop. If I make applications available, then it's purely just the application at work. Nice and simple.